Hi, I'm Monica and welcome to my reading vlog for The Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. This will be my second time reading this book and I'm very excited to get back into the world of Alex Stern with all the occult and magic and learning about all the secret societies. What I do remember from first reading Ninth House was that Alex is able to see ghosts and that there were quite some disturbing moments <laughs> in my pals. A quick summary of this book is that it is an adult dark academia fantasy book with themes of occult magic, sacrifice, and hell. And we're following Alex Stern who comes from a rough childhood and past and she's given a second chance to watch over the secret societies of Yale and specifically Lethe House. And her role is to protect them from so-called dark forces. This vlog will contain some spoilers. I've tried my best not to spoil too much but for a warning that there can be some spoilers. Anyway, let's just get right to it. For my first check-in, I'm around 15% of the way through. I'm on chapter 5 and around page 70. And first off, coming back into the world of Yale University and the world of the occult is very interesting and fascinating to me because I feel like I'm relearning everything and picking up clues and hints at stuff that I didn't when I first read through Ninth House. It's interesting to see Alex being introduced again and how I'm picking up on things I didn't notice before, how she's more withdrawn from others, but how she's more out there and normal with the Darlington. Also the magic and the rituals that we're being introduced to, it's very nice to dive back into that and for me relearn and like refresh my memory of what happened in this book. And I did forget about the two different timelines that we have in this book. First off, we have the fall timeline where Alex is just being introduced to the secret societies in Lethe and first meeting Darlington. And then we have the second timeline which is in winter, Darlington being in Spain and being missing and seeing how Alex kind of deals with the Lethe rituals and all the occult stuff on her own. So it's a nice contrast between the before and the after of whatever events take place. And coming from when I first read through this book, the second read through is a lot more smoother and easier sailing and I think that's just with me having a more deeper understanding because I've read this book before. Anyways, I think that's just my thoughts for now and I'm excited to see how my reactions will be with other parts in this book. For my second check-in, I am halfway through this book. I am on page 220 around chapter 13. First off, I do want to take back what I said in the first part about Alex being withdrawn. She is not withdrawn. <laughs> I misinterpreted her. She's very willing to dive in headfirst into what Lethe has to offer her and she really goes into any type of situation to get the justice that she thinks that is right. With Alex's past, she's very headstrong and jaded because of her hardships going through CPP and her having really bad experiences with the ghosts that she sees and then them becoming corporeal. And I was kind of shocked at how dark this book actually is. I first read this book three years ago but I guess my memory of it wasn't the best and I don't have a really good memory so makes sense how I'm a little bit surprised at how dark this book actually is. Magic itself in this world is not without consequence as we see with many different characters throughout this book including Alex and she's being introduced to other sides of magic that there are consequences. And with the two timelines, we're still with the fall timeline where Darlington is still showing Alex the different secret societies and also in the winter timeline where it's present day, I would assume, with Alex trying to figure out about this girl's murder, Tara Hutchins. I did struggle a bit with this murder case because it goes quite slow but there is a lot of buildup and I know really big things go down and with Alex being quite vengeful showing that with magic or with this power that the secret societies can provide to people that not everyone is safe and Alex is there to shake things up and I really like that about her. Although some parts of the present day with Alex and with Darlington missing I think it will pick up quite quickly after I move on from the halfway point and I know the climax of this book is wild and I really can't wait to see how I react to that as well. This is my last check-in for Ninth House and I've completed this book and my reread of it. 
First off, another thing that I forgot about this book was that the ghost that Alex can see actually can possess her and she like welcomes it and they grant her supernatural strength and speed and all of that. And right when Darlington gets sucked away into hell, um, that's when he found out that it wasn't it wasn't like someone else who killed Helly and Alex's old buddies. It was actually Helly possessing Alex and then killing them. So that was a huge twist that I did not recall. <laughs> I was surprised at that. And I didn't really mention like the side characters, but I really, really like Dawes because she's the reserved but really intelligent sidekick that Alex needs during this time with Darlington gone. And I really like the detective Turner because he's quite reluctant to help out with the occult stuff but then he's only doing this job for extra money. So I like how this ragtag team of people come together to try and solve Tara Hutchins murder and that ending with the ultimate twist of who's actually killing all of the girls and who killed Tara. I was shocked at that. I think I first read Ninth House very very quickly so I don't recall all the important events and I'm really excited to see how Alex and company go to hell and try to save Darlington in Hellbent. So on to my concluding thoughts. Before I get into my final thoughts of Ninth House, I do want to note that I did lower my rating by half a star until it is now 4.5 out of 5 stars. And the reason for that was because of the slow parts and trudging along in the beginning. But once you get past that point, this book just flies by. And also sorry if you hear any noise in the background. Ignore that, please. <laughs> the world of the occult is very dark at Yale Society with all its eight secret societies and the magic that we learn about has very strong consequences when misused. Alex as a protagonist is very strong-willed and willing to go to very far lengths to protect those she cares about, especially her friends. I really like Dawes and her quirky nature and also really like Turner the detective and him being one of the good guys even though he's kind of a skeptic about all the occult stuff and magic. And I really did like Darlington being different from the typical wealthy upperclassmen. Also, the appearance of ghosts really made this world really creepy and atmospheric. And I really can't wait to see more of this world in the sequel Hellbent and see more of the ghosts and possibly demons. Overall, my thoughts on Ninth House are still very positive and I'm finding that I'm liking very specific type of dark academia books and I think this one is the ones that I do enjoy because there is action, there is some fast-paced moments, and also very dark and graphic moments as well. For me, I do have very peculiar taste when it comes to dark academia, but then I will have another video about that. I want to say thank you so much for watching this vlog. I hope you enjoyed it, and don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and don't forget to ring that bell to be notified of future videos. And I'll see you all in my next one. Bye!